Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. This is theCUBE where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Alistair Winter, VP Technology Services Support for Servers and Networking at HP. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you, good to we, be here. We had Antonio on yesterday. He's so smooth, he sits back, you know, he's you know, laid back. Such a gentleman too. Such a gentleman, <laughs> this is a great guest to have. Um, but he's a, he's a fierce competitor too. I mean, he's, Absolutely. he's very straight, straight up and uh, he's got the messaging down but he's not afraid to, to tell him how it feels, but he's, he was clear yesterday, the innovation strategy for HP is about compute. Um, talk about that, from your standpoint, you have to go out to the customers and understand what's going on. Um, how is that translating into the marketplace? Yeah, it's uh, absolutely the case. The innovation is a real big, big deal for Antonio, and he's driving um, a multi-threaded uh, uh, strategy there with, uh, uh, with the server business. Uh, for me, in, in, in support, really, um, it's very much about addressing the core of our business, which is really the rack and tower space. And that's where uh, we have our big market presence. But also working in the areas of innovation, uh, especially in the very high end, hyperscale, uh, scale out area, uh, with the uh, partnership with Foxconn. So that's a very interesting uh, area to develop a support strategy for. Uh, and also looking at the SMB and really what, uh, what our customers in that space are really looking for uh, from a support experience. So, um, you know, it's great opportunity for me to work with Antonio and really ensure that our support strategy um, delivers the value that customers really want from, uh, from this new innovation. Alison, talk about the evolution of, of the innovation around some of the support issues. I mean, back in the, you go back into look at key inflection points, I wouldn't say inflection points, but you know, innovation. As boxes move to more um, modular approach, you saw hot swapping out equipment. You know, obviously, you know, Google's famous as a service provider yep. of just buying a bunch of gear, throwing it, we're throwing it away and replacing it rather than trying to break fix, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, what's, and, and now you have the cloud, right? So what is the new tactic for services around hardware? Because, you know, obviously density is an issue. Yes. The new servers here that we're, we're, we're next to showing some massive power uh, and scale at that level. So you got new density footprint issues. You have facility planning, cooling, power and cooling. You got blades, servers are sticking around. You, Antonio's like, blades aren't going away. Yep. yep. Okay, from a customer standpoint, I got all this gear and I got all this technology. What is that next level of innovation? Yep, sure. Um, I, and you're absolutely right, I think it's the whole scale out, massive scale uh, server environment that we're really looking to address and, and innovate around. So yeah, there are a number of key challenges that, uh, that customers are facing there. Um, certainly around being proactive and having a proactive approach. Uh, you know, although it's massive scale and some of these apps, are, you know, single apps at massive scale, if a server goes wrong, there's still a problem and an issue to address. So being as proactive as we can, actually having the servers connected back to HP where we can assess and, uh, and ensure uh, we're addressing problems before they, uh, before they start. Uh, also things like um, you know, asset management and um, you know, just helping a customer understand this landscape, uh, really bringing tools and, um, and approaches that really help them manage that, uh, that estate. Alex, so you mentioned hyperscale. You guys have a big initiative there. Uh, we had some uh, some of the hyperscale guys on yesterday, and, and they had indicated that they see over a third of the market as opportunity opportunity for them, which is substantial. That's today. What have you learned, or can you glean from the web giants that are doing hyperscale and have been for the last five or seven years, from a service and support standpoint? What's different, and how are you changing? You referenced it before, but specifically, yep. how are you adjusting to that new model? Yeah, they, I mean, they absolutely have a very different approach to the traditional enterprise, uh, where um, essentially a customer would would expect HP to you know, to run the whole support environment uh, on their behalf. Uh, these guys are very self-sufficient, and, uh, and each one that we deal with has a different capability set of requirements. So we have to be quite customised in the way that we approach the uh, uh, the solution. Um, you know, typically what we see is that uh, you know they have a requirement to get access to. Uh, parts that fail, um, 
and that they will actually affect the repair themselves. So they don't need an HP person on site to, to do that work, they'll do that uh, um, themselves. Uh, also, clearly, when something goes wrong or they have a problem, they want a very um, bespoke response. They want us to understand their environment. And also in the hyperscale space, very often, we're actually selling a server um, which is unique to the customer. I mean, we design the server specifically for the requirements of, of the client. So when they call, you know, clearly we need to understand that and we need to be able to um, uh, address their, their issues. Am I right that the, the hyperscale mindset is, I mean, in the enterprise, it, Historically, anyway, some device fails. Ah, device failed. Fix it. Replace it. Ah, you know, maybe there's some redundancy going on. But it, it, from my discussions with folks in the hyperscale world, sometimes you have to squint through what they actually say because they're not too forthcoming. But you, you talk to people who work there and, and the like. That when a component fails in a rack, they just keep running. Another fails, okay, and then eventually they, you know, throw it into the wood chipper. Yep. Um, is that will that mentality seep into the first of all is it, is it is it an accurate depiction and will it seep into the enterprise? I think it is an accurate um, description. I mean, when a server fails, it, it is a pain. So it's not, yeah. you know, it's not a no problem at all. It is a pain. Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, typically the uh, the application and the uh, and the business will be will be unaffected by the uh, by the incident. Um, and and I think you know, what we're seeing is actually more and more enterprise IT. Uh, teams actually becoming service providers. Uh, we had a, um, uh, an advisory board actually a, a few weeks ago in, in Paris, and um, yeah, these were enterprise customers, and there's a huge interest in you know, how these big tier one service providers are operating, and um, you know, really looking to try and understand how they can leverage that in their, in their environment. So I, you know, I, I do think we'll slowly see that approach Move into the uh, move into the enterprise. One of, one of the things John and I were talking about before you came on was was the, the the presence of the public cloud and the imperative or or not or lack thereof of HP, for example, being more aggressive in the public cloud. You got a public cloud, I know that. But given what you said about customization, that the enterprise is highly customized, the the, the public cloud guys are, are highly homogeneous. So, what can we take away from that? Does that mean that? that the cost structures of the enterprise will always be somewhat more expensive than the public cloud guys? Uh, and is that okay? Or will that continue to put pressure on IT as it has in the past five years? Yeah, I, mean, I, I certainly think the, uh, you know, the cost profile um, w will remain different mm -hmm. for some time. But, but for sure what's happening in that uh, cloud space will continually push uh, the pressure down and, uh, and I, think it will, uh, I think it will evolve. I mean, the customization of, uh, of servers, I think, will only really happen at that very high end. Because, yeah. I mean, there is a cost associated with that. And, and actually, um, you know, many of the features that, you know, a Google or Facebook um, uh, require or, or don't require, the enterprise does. So, you know, the, the, our ability to really you know, monitor in detail the, the server itself, this is something that actually the, you know, the tier ones really don't value. Uh, but when you get into the enterprise space, they do, and there's a cost associated with that. And we can you know, present the customer back with telemetry and, 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 and knowledge that ensures that uh, you know, they have a very highly available um, infrastructure for their, for their business. Alice, I've got to ask you about some of the big trends out there and how you can vector into that with your um, innovation, your services. Um, Software-defined data center is, it the, is the talk of the town. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's kind of just a, a marketing term at this point, but SDN certainly has traction with virtualization. You're seeing workloads being the focus of, of, the, of the customer's mind. Under the hood, how do you guys service that? Um, because there's risk. I mean, we've heard from about flexible capacity, things of that nature. Yes. Um, Talk about the risks uh, and balancing the risks and the, the reward side of, of, of taking the innovation steps. Because it, some of the fine data center is bleeding edge. Um, it it's is. being defined in real time. Um, some new stuff's coming together. Software defined storage. Craig Nunez was here earlier with David Scott on theCUBE. You got SDN is pumping on all cylinders. So that's all great. How do you keep up with that? Is it, is it a wake of just uh, you know, new stuff? And how are you sorting through that yep. wake of innovation coming from the SDDC, Software Defined Data Yeah, no, great question. And actually I've had a lot of personal involvement in SDN, so uh, that's you know, where my heritage has come from. That's the, the work I've done for the past couple of years. And we're, we've been absolutely, from a services perspective, in with the, uh, the product development teams from day one. Um, 
And you know, quite clearly in that environment, it's imperative that we really hide the seams. So we're presenting something that should be very simple and agile and, uh, and easy for a customer to use. But behind that is a deal of complexity, which really they're looking for us to abstract. So, um, so, we're, so we're doing that and, um, and we're working very hard to ensure we provide that seamless experience. What are some of the touch points there? Give us some, a taste, some specifics around, you know, I won't say speed bumps on the, on the, on the accelerated path to software defined data center, but like, what are some of the hot button issues that you guys are focused on for customers? Well, I, th I think um, the principal challenge is, uh, and if you take SDN as an example, I think uh, intellectually, uh, you know, the CIOs and the IT teams are bought into this as, a, as something that they absolutely need to do. It's, it's not a case of if I'm going to do it, it's more a case of when I'm going to do it. Um, and we, we really need to help them find the right path for their, for their business to, you know, to adopt. Um, so yeah, we, we released this trusted network transformation service at, at Discover, which is really for SDN, you know, presenting the customer with a, a path we know will work, because uh, we've been there, we've seen it, and we've done it, and we've done it in our own IT, uh, our own IT team. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's just about a pragmatic path. And you know, when you start you know, playing with the network, I mean, this is, you know, this is like open heart surgery, right? Yeah. So you need to be very, very confident that. Well, the um, customers want it. Work. Obviously, it's, it's not. It's going to be a painful process, but obviously, the future is is pretty much, you know, paved the path of this is where you need to be for innovation, better advantage, cost structures, all those things we talk about in the queue. But I got to ask you, you know, the old expression is, you know, it's like changing out the engine of the airplane at thirty thousand feet. You know, it's it's really complicated. So you know, a lot of people are scratching their heads and they want a roadmap to that. So what what advice do you give CIOs in each stage of the adoption? Tire kicking to scoping it out, I'm in full planning mode and rolling yep. out to, you know, I'm a early, fast uh, early adopter. Well, I think the, uh, the, the key, first and foremost, is that um, whatever you do, it has to be aligned to the business outcome. And I think what we're seeing actually is, and, and, and I can talk from experience in the networking space, that typically the, you know, the networking team in a, in a classic traditional enterprise would very much see um, their customers being the server guy or the app guy. Um, and what we're able to do is to sort of elevate their thinking to really get aligned with the business and the business outcome. And especially with SDN, you know, it's all about the app. It's all about you know, trying to provide some differentiation um, uh, and business value from, uh, from the app. And once you can get the networking team thinking in those terms, actually they become very creative and they can really see the, uh, the benefits. I think the other thing, of course, is it's not just a technology discussion. This is a people and process discussion too. Um, and and uh, certainly our customers are looking for our help and our guidance to really overcome those uh, people and process issues. Because you know, the enterprise um, IT team of the future will be very different to how it looks today in terms of skills and uh, capabilities. Well, I want to ask you about the enterprise IT team from an organization standpoint, and it, and it relates to your own title, uh, servers and, and networking. And we hear about convergence, and it's storage servers and networking. Um, I've always said, storage is kind of an add-on. You know, I mean, it's clearly the, the, the networking and the computer coming together, and storage is it's there. We can put it in the rack and yep. we can call it converged. How converged is it really, and how converged will it be in the future? And my specific question is, what does that mean for the service experience? So should I, am I reading too much into it that, that you're focused on the parts that, in my opinion, really are converged? Um, or, or, or is that something that will come in the future? I wonder if you could talk about that yeah. a little bit. I mean, it, it, it's certainly converging. I can't yeah. say it's completely converged. <laughs> Yeah, the converging and, infrastructure just doesn't sound no, as good. It doesn't, yeah. no. <laughs> and we'll get there eventually. Kind of. And clearly, bad marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and clearly, Antonio has been chartered with looking at that you know, from a from a from a tech perspective. Right. I think from a support perspective, we've done a lot of work actually to really prepare the groundwork for this. So, we have a very consistent portfolio. We've simplified our portfolio, um, and uh, you know, from a customer perspective, it, it, it's sort of seamless today. I would I, I would say. So the more the technology converges, it will just you know, sit really nicely into the into the work that we've uh, the, 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 that we've done. So I, you know, I'm I'm really excited about the you know the the work that Antonio and the new team will do. And I think the other th the other thing for me, which is which is great, of course, is that uh, I think with this new combination and this this new focus, we can really 
uh, leverage the strength that we have in the data center with our servers and really use that as a leverage for, for our networking. So when you look at the networking business today, you know, we're very strong on the edge of the network. Um, you know, that's really where our heartland has been. And uh, we have great products in the data center. Uh, yeah, we really need to, using this trusted network transformation approach, and you know, the strength that we have on the server side, you know, we really need to start pulling that into the, uh, into the core of the network. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about um, analytics. How are you using analytics to, uh, uh, well, uh, will analytics change the service experience? Let me just leave yes. it at that. How so? So, um, what we've been really pushing with our, with our service offers is this notion of proactive and actually moving to preemptive. So, uh, you know, proactive care, uh, we, um, you know, we've been really pushing and it's been very successful along with data center care. And that experience is all about HP being connected to the customer. You know, we, we, uh, we, we use telemetry data, you know, we sense the, the state of the device, we bring that back, you know, we analyze it and we present back to the customer you know, information that we believe is of uh, value to them. Um, I, I, I honestly think we've only just scratched the surface and, and we've been taking a very, you know, very much uh, an infrastructure approach. Mm -hmm. I think um, you know, over time you'll see us sort of extend and expand that. And um, you know, again, you know, when, uh, you know, whether, whether the customer is, is operating at, you know, at huge scale, actually being able to compare, for example, their environment with, with other people using similar products, um, yeah, that, that's uh, that's intellectual property that they uh, they will value and they will pay for. Yeah, I mean, it would think I would think you have an opportunity for some dog fooding here, or champagne drinking, as they say, eat your own dog food or drink your own champagne, <laughs> with you know autonomy, being able to you yes, know, sift absolutely. through log files. You got Vertica, being able to process information very quickly. Yes, that's that's um, all underway. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. What kind sure. of time frame are we looking at there? Is that a, is that a near term, mid term, or long term? So I won't put you on the spot for a date because I know you can't tell me. But it, however you want to define it, near term, mid term, or long term? I would say it's mid. It's a mid term. Yeah. A mid term activity. Right. The work is underway. Mm. What is the big work here for you guys next next uh, twelve months on, um, for your organization? Also, you mentioned the accelerated path for the software defined networking through the data center and the end with the hybrid cloud. Uh, what are your key objectives for the next year? So, so for me, it's uh, very much focused on this uh, hyperscale service provider uh, space. That really is the future of compute when you look at the market share that we're projecting. So having a, you know, the right and differentiated service experience in that space is absolutely critical. Um, and especially as that starts to move down into the enterprise, we need to have that. Right, so that's, that's very clearly the, uh, the number one thing on my, on my agenda. So I got to ask you a personal question. Um, Looking back over the past just three years, um, we've been you know we've been here four years now uh, covering HP. I want to get your take on the marketplace. Not so much HP, but HP's in a in the tornado if you want to use that expression. Uh, obviously, with people talk about this inflection point being really something never seen before in terms of acceleration of, of innovation change. It's happening faster. Obviously, converged infrastructure meets big data, cloud, yep. mobile, social, you know, computers, you know, mobile devices, edge of the network, Internet of Things. All these things is just blows people's minds. So I got to ask you a personal question. What's your take of all this? What do you, what do you, how do you observe that? And how do you describe that to your friends about in tech, the importance of all this stuff coming together? I mean, what, I mean, given your experience, what is the most exciting thing and what is this all about? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, it truly is an exciting time to be in to be in tech, I have to say it's uh, you know, it's amazing what the possibilities are that this new style of IT can uh, you know can present. And it was actually fascinating watching uh, you know Meg and uh, her colleagues uh, speak in the plenary yesterday about uh, about the strategy that Intel and Microsoft uh, are taking. And 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 for me, you know. Um, I think the, you know, the, the key is, is really making sure that uh, with all these things blending together, it really does enhance our lives. And I really do you know, believe that we're at a point where, you know, with wearables and uh, you know, all the other tech um, going on, that uh, you know, we, we really can you know, make a difference um, uh, to society. And, uh, uh, I, I, just, I think it's uh, super exciting. It's not just the geek speeds and feeds anymore, it's really global impact. I mean, you're seeing, I mean, Google bought a satellite company for half a billion dollars, you know, some short change for them. 
yep. but that can bring internet access to you know emerging countries. Yeah, it could absolutely. bring in disaster relief, just to, you know, and surveillance. Uh, but uh, it, it, this is this is game changing. Internet of it Things uh, changing the value chains for oil and gas to yeah. medical. I think what's what's interesting though is uh, although the future is very exciting, very clearly clearly exciting. Actually, when you come back to the the world today and the enterprise IT teams today, they still have a lot of traditional IT to manage and that's yeah. what they wake up every day worrying about. So the more we can help them to migrate and manage and evolve that towards the new style, the, uh, yeah. the better. I mean, we always use car analogies, sports analogies. It's really like, I don't want to say horse and buggy IT, but like really it's, you know, it's Model T. If you think about what's going on now, these engines of innovations are being reconstructed, you know, from a geek yes. standpoint. I mean, you just think about SDN, how, how uh, game changing that does at the networking level. It's just these new engines of uh, productivity and just uh, scale. Yes. That's just phenomenal. Yes. Uh, Alistair, uh, thanks so much uh, for your commentary. Great to see you again. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. <laughs>